Hello and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial series. PowerShell is a framework uh, and a scripting language uh, that we use in Windows. Uh, and now actually it's available on Mac OS and Linux. Um, we're gonna be doing a tutorial on PowerShell 5.1, which is the default that does come with Windows 10. Um, so we're gonna go over a few of the little quirks and get you started with the fundamentals today. We're not gonna be writing any kind of code. We're gonna be exploring some of the commands inside PowerShell, um, but we're not actually gonna be scripting anything that's going to be in the next video when we go over variables and other things. Uh, so first off, uh, let's just try to see what is PowerShell in fact. Uh, so PowerShell here, we can run it two different ways. Uh, there's just the shell, uh, which is basically similar to your terminal in Mac OS or your terminal in Linux um, or your command prompt in Windows, um, if you used command prompt in the past. This will let you kind of see where you're at, um, run scripts from here. You can run commands from here as well. Um, you can basically do everything you can in PowerShell in here. I, on the other hand, prefer to work in the ISC. So if we do a search in Windows here for PowerShell, we will see a Windows PowerShell ISE. Now what I always do is I always right click on this and run as administrator. Running as administrator will let you uh, do things that you'll see in the next couple minutes, uh, which does come in handy and is only available if you run it as administrator. Uh, so I usually just take the precaution and run as administrator every time that I'm in here. Um, so a few things that PowerShell has that's very easy to makes it very easy to use is commandlets. Now those are verb noun syntaxes. So what I mean by that is the first word of the commandlet is always going to be a verb. The second is always going to be a noun. Now there are a few exceptions to that, um, but the majority, I would probably say 99% of the commandlets uh, follow that standard. Uh, so here we're gonna take some simple commandlets um, to begin with, and we're just gonna do a get date here. So we have get as the verb, date as the noun, and we can run this and we get today's date and time, which today is Tuesday, April 20th, 2021 at 7.38 p.m. here in Canada. Now we can do some other commands like the get service command, which will get us all the services that are currently running on our computer right now. Now this, these commands have the options of doing multiple different things. You can set variables, you can set different types of services. You can eventually connect to Azure, AWS, Active Directory, manage your servers. You can connect to remote computers and do some changes on their end as well. Um, now, you're probably like, how can I remember all these commands? You don't have to. I don't remember the majority of commands. But what you can do is if, as long as you know two commandlets that I'm about to show you, uh, you could probably find the command you're looking for. And those are get, command, and then if you just do a get here at afterwards and we run this, do a, the name and then get with a star asterisk at the end, which is a wildcard, we will get every commandlet that starts with get. Now that is a lot of commands. It's I would say probably one of the most that get, add, and set probably have a lot of commandlets set to them. Um, but here we can see we have get file share. Uh, there's also get disk, get disk image, and a bunch of other different things. A lot of, there will be the get date, get printer, um, get scheduled task if you're running scheduled tasks on your computer or your server. Then the other one is get help. Now this one will give you all the info on a specific commandlet that you give it. So let's run the get help command on get date. And let's run this here. And 
And here we have the get date and we have the syntax here and we have the aliases, which there is no alias for get date. Um, but let me do a get help on the get service commandlet and we will see an alias there. So here we can see the alias there is GSV. So what that means is if I type in GSV here and I run just that command, it will do the exact same thing as running get service. They are equivalent. At the end of the day, you do have to make sure that your code is still readable. I always tend to use the full syntax version of the commandlets instead of short forms. Because if I do go back and go to read the code, it gets hard to understand. Uh, maybe what you're looking at with aliases, unless you know the aliases. Uh, and there is a commandlet to get all the aliases, uh, which is handy. It's just get alias. And you can see a bunch of aliases there for commandlets that you have. So now I'm going to show you how we run a script. So by default on Windows 10, if you haven't done any modifications to your PowerShell environment, and if we go in here and we go into my documents and we go into scripts and I try to run my Hello World script that I wrote a little bit earlier, you will see that it will not run because um, it cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled on this machine. This is where I was saying that it's always handy to run your PowerShell ISC as administrator because we can now go ahead and change this. So by default, if we do the get execution policy on the ISC, we will get that it's restricted, uh, which is, this is the default with Windows 10. It doesn't let you run any scripts, even those that you write yourself or that you download from trusted developers. So what you, we have to do here is we have to do the set execution policy, and then we could put in a dash. Now what the dash does is it brings up a list of parameters for that commandlet. So here we can see tons of different parameters. We won't worry too, too much about these right now. Most of these aren't going to be very used at the beginning, um, but we do have some up here, which is the execution policy, scope, force, what if, confirm. Those I'm going to be going over today. So if we do the execution policy, we get all the different options for execution policy. We're going to set it to remote signed. Uh, this is a Microsoft recommendation. This is going to let you to run scripts that you have written, written yourself or those that you have downloaded from trusted uh, developers or trusted, uh, trusted scripters. So here we're going to run this command. Now we're going to get this window here. Uh, that basically says the execution policy helps protect you from scripts that you do not trust. Changing the execution policy might expose you to the security risk described in the about execution policies help topic. At this link, do you want to change the execution policy? For purposes of showing you more parameters, I'm actually just going to close out of this and not change it. So if I run the get execution policy again, we will see that it's still set to restricted. So here, if we do another parameter, we can actually see that there's a scope. Now here, the scope is going to be current user, local machine, machine policy, process, or user policy. In our case, we're just going to be changing it for the whole computer, so we won't need to specify a scope. Uh, but this is often maybe useful if you just want to change um, the execution policy just for your current user that you're, you're using, or just for the process that you're running, the PowerShell process that you're running right that instant. Now the other parameter that we're actually going to show you today is going to be the what if command and the confirm parameter. So if we do a what if here, when we're going to run this line, it's just going to give us an output of what if performing the operation set execution policy on target remote sign. This basically just shows you what would happen if you ran this command? So really, what if I ran the set execution policy command? Now, if we 
Now, if we do the dash confirm here and we put it to a colon and then the false, and then we add one more parameter here just to make it work for this commandlet itself, because this commandlet is pretty intrusive, we're going to need to add the dash force onto it. Now, if we run this here, we're actually going to see that it sets it up no problem. So now if we get the execution policy, we're going to see that it says remote signed. Now, if we go into our PowerShell um, shell window, actually, and try to run that hello world script again, we're going to see that we get hello world to the output, which is what we expected. So I always like to start off a new environment, setting the execution policy, always running the PowerShell ISC as administrator. And then you are all set for the next set of videos that are going to be coming out. In the next video, we're going to be going over some variables, uh, some different data types in PowerShell. And after that, we're going to be getting into some more uh, almost programming-esque code uh, in this scripting language. We're going to be going over some loops. We're going to be going over some conditional statements. And I'll see you then.